now evolution has to become conscious and it's in our hands because the root of our own consciousness is that which transcends the three great steps that nature has taken. Nature has prepared the stage, but consciousness must take the stage. Confluence of, on the one hand, spirituality, politics, and um, you know, culture that the Bengal Renaissance is that really comes together in Sri Aurobindo. In his time, uh, you see, he is really crossing or bridging two very, very profoundly different cultures, the East and the West. And he bridges them very successfully. Okay, so he has a message that is universal and answers the deepest aspirations of the East and West. Sri Aurobindo went when he was very young to England. He was sent by his father and sort of grew up there, went to school, went to Cambridge University, uh, graduated in classics. He is one of the founding figures of the Indian nationalist movement. He doesn't start off as a spiritual figure. He starts as a revolutionary in, in Bengal. He went to Calcutta and masterminded a revolutionary movement. And the British really perceived him as a very as, as the most dangerous man in India. They had imprisoned him for a year and tried to, you know, try him on grounds of sedition. During this period, his major spiritual realizations came to him. And yet it had already started during the freedom struggle. So he comes to yoga seeking power, which is a very un-yogic way to approach yoga. Sri Aurobindo says, I want, I want power to save this nation. But the, the result of the, of, the, of, the, of the teaching is that he has this very profound experience in which the world becomes unreal to him. And that was the beginning of Sri Aurobindo's you know, spiritual life. He was writing this very, very popular journal called Bande Mataram. It was the resurgence of Indian spirituality. He received a, a, some guidance from above and went to this town called Pondicherry and sort of went into intensive spiritual work there to bring down what he called the supermind. And then he was joined by the mother, who was a French lady, and she represented a very, very significant aspect of his yoga. She has the kind of spiritual capacity and power that makes it possible for anybody and everybody to receive it. He said, if it were left to me, maybe I could have given this yoga to a hundred people, no more. But the whole world can get it from the mother. Is there something that can integrate these in, in us? And Sri Aurobindo says, yes. The answer is the psychic being. It is the integrator within, mind, vital, and physical. Each one of them, as I was saying, is, is a separate kind of consciousness. And there is a separate being to each of these kinds of consciousness in each of us. And depending on what is predominant in you, is that that is your central being. So, that can become the leader of the march, the first primary leader of the march. Okay? You can either find karma yoga to be that which attracts you most. You can find bhakti yoga to be that which attracts you most. Jnana yoga or whatever, one, any one of these. But as you follow it, you find that you, through that particular path, are integrating with the other yogas and also bringing the psychic more and more to the front. This is the absolute basis of aspiration because the psychic being's existence here is ultimately to will its own evolution into divinity. And so aspiration, ultimately the root of aspiration is the evolution of consciousness into the supermind. It is experimental. He's actually, he actually talks about it in terms of experiment He's maintaining a diary called the Record of Yoga in which he's testing each step. 
And then it's only in 1926 that, you know, he actually establishes the overmental consciousness in his body, right? You know, the, what he calls the overmental consciousness. And then uh, that point he retires because of the urgency and he wanted to seclude himself or isolate himself to just bring down the supermind. Here are two human beings who are trying to change the universe and believe they can, they have the key to it, and it is a certain consciousness that they have to realize and bring into their own bodies. It is probably the grandest sort of uh, hubris that can ever be dreamed of by humanity. That's what makes it avataric. He thought of the supramental descent and manifestation as the solution that will ultimately be able to cause humanity to take the next leap. So my sense of it is that that is happening and that that is taking its own, own turns and its own steps. And that whether we like it or not, the world is in the orbit of a world yoga right now. Now evolution has to become conscious. And it's in our hands because the root of our own consciousness is that which transcends the three great steps that nature has taken. Nature has prepared the stage, but consciousness must take the stage. Pure consciousness has to take the leap. And it's within our means to do it.